I finally have a day with intermittent access to direct full sun, so I can do some measurements on the solar cell voltage and current. Now I have this solar light and this one that's a stake that goes in the ground vertically. So depending what I end up doing, I might be able to make use of both of these. So just comparing the amount of light, the one that's more of a stake light only has one white LED. And this is at least three years old. So I'm not sure if the light itself is just not powered as brightly or if the light and this enclosure is getting dull over the years. This one looks brighter, whiter, crisper, cleaner because it's not been outside in the weather and it's got two white LEDs. This top just twists right off and then this is just an empty vessel. This one has a light dependent resistor in here to tell when to come on or off and a single LED. There's no power switch on this one. So when there's light or darkness here, it automatically comes on and off. The battery is inside. So with this taken apart, this one has a 400 milliamp hour NICAD battery compared to the 100 milliamp hour that was in this one. Solar cell coming to the circuit board, light dependent resistor. What's on this circuit board? I'll take the battery out so I can see this better without the light being on. This one has more electronics on it. Looks like it has an inductor couple of diodes, an electrolytic and a resistor, and a four pin switcher chip. This one says ANA608. Here's the best I could find for a data sheet with ANA608. Let's see, it's a TO94 package, the same four pin as the YX8018 that was in the other solar light. I will guess this means efficiency of the converter, 85 to 90%. It has the same pins, power ground, chip enable, and the output inductor. And the application circuit examples, very similar to the other YX8018 chip. I did not trace the circuit out this time because it's really going to be similar to any number of these or a combination. But essentially we have a boost converter switching regulator circuit where the output is on LX. We have an inductor as part of the switching circuit. The solar cell charges the battery through this diode. Otherwise, the battery is connected to ground and VCC, VDD of the switching regulator. And when the chip is enabled, you get your PWM three volts out to turn on the LED. And chip enable may be active high or active low depending on devices and manufacturers. I'm not sure what this one is for this light. The photoresistor is simply on the chip enable and based on the amount of light, this pin will turn on or off the output for the LED. I disconnected the solar cell from the rest of the circuit on both of these lights. The bigger solar cell gives me 2.2 volts in direct sun and I'm able to get 53 milliamps out of it. On this smaller solar cell, 2.25 volts out, and when I do a current measurement, I get 28 milliamps. This one draws just about 10 milliamps from the circuit when the LED is on. So let's look at the voltage output of that switcher boost circuit. I have a scope probe on the inductor output voltage that goes to drive the LED. So if I block the light sensor to turn the LED on, we have a three volt, 44% duty square wave at 170 kilohertz powering the white LED. So both of these solar lights operate very similar, but it's interesting how the one with only one LED and only about half of the current available from the solar cell has a 400 milliamp hour battery and the original only has a 100 milliamp hour. I think I have five lights like this. So if I want to put various kinds of sensors, temperature, humidity, soil conditions, I can just throw these all over the place, pick them up, drop them in wherever, if I can have them battery powered. And maybe I could do some data logging of whatever I'm measuring or if I can actually power something wireless, maybe I can transmit it. Maybe I can have a bunch of nodes and one hub or something. But there's not too much empty space in here. And that's kind of why I liked this one. It's got a lot more real estate in there. 
I can now see what I have available in terms of power and real estate. So now I can start refining ideas about what I want to put together using all of this. Soon I can start trying some actual tests, putting alternate hardware in here instead of the light, see what I can make use of with the available battery power in these units.